We've talked informally about what we mean by continuity, where a function is smooth, continuous, where we can trace the graph without picking up our pencil. Uh, again, that approach, to use that as our definition, um, wouldn't be very structured, and we would always have to have, again, the complete picture of a graph to understand continuity. If we have a graph that's missing information, hiding information from us, we're going to run into some problems. So we want to come up with a more formal definition of limits, or I'm sorry, of continuity, and we want to establish a way to find, determine where certain functions are continuous. So a function is continuous if the limit as x approaches some value c of our function equals the function value at that point. So in order for this definition to hold, this limit must exist. And our function value at c must be defined. So if we want to determine whether a function is continuous at some given point, c, we need to evaluate the limit of our function as x approaches c. That limit must exist as some real number. We need to evaluate the function at c. Our function must be defined there. And those two values must be exactly equal to each other. If a function fails any of those conditions, then the function is said to be discontinuous or not continuous at that point C. When we talked about limits, we also had the possibility of discussing one-sided limits, right and left limits. So we can also talk about continuity from the right or continuity from the left. So in this graph to the left, we can look at this point negative 4, x equals negative 4. When x equals negative 4, our function value is 3, so our function is defined there. So we have that first condition met. The other thing that we could consider would be the limit at this point. Now we've already seen that if we consider the limit here, that doesn't exist because as we approach from the left and right hand side, those limits aren't equal to each other. But if we just consider the limit as x approaches negative 4 from the left hand side, that limit equals 3. So that's another condition met. The function exists, is defined there. The limit exists. And since those values are equal to each other, we can say that f is continuous from the left at x equals negative 4. So it's not continuous at negative 4 because there is this break. But as we approach from the left, from negative infinity up to negative 4, we can trace that part of the graph without picking up our pencil. So let's introduce some different continuity properties that we can apply to solving some different problems we'll encounter. The first is if our function f of x equals k, where k is some constant, that's always going to be a continuous function. So if we're looking at the graph of y equals k, that's a horizontal line. It never have any, has any breaks, holes, asymptotes. So this line, y equals k, is always continuous. Anytime we're dealing with a constant, we can always just say that is continuous. If n is some positive integer, then we can say that x to the nth power is continuous. So x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth power, any of those functions 
will always be continuous. So if we look at something like x squared, no holes or breaks, x cubed, no holes or breaks. So each of those functions are always going to be smooth and continuous. We can also say that polynomial functions are always continuous. So polynomial functions, again, remember, are functions that can change directions multiple times. But even if we have a function changing direction multiple times, oops, that shouldn't have stopped writing there. Even if we have a function that changes directions multiple times, there are never going to be any holes or breaks in a polynomial function. So polynomial functions are always continuous. Rational functions are continuous unless the denominator is equal to zero. So rational functions will be continuous unless we get zeros in the denominator which can either indicate a vertical asymptote or a hole in the graph. So if we're dealing with polynomial functions, they're always continuous. If we're dealing with rational functions, we need to consider the denominator where that's equal to 0. There are going to be points of discontinuity. And again, depending on the question, if we need to figure out the type of discontinuity, or if we just need to know that the function is discontinuous there. If n is an odd positive integer greater than 1, then the nth root of f of x is going to be continuous wherever the function f of x is continuous. If n is some even positive integer, then the nth root of f of x is going to be continuous whenever f of x is continuous and non-negative. Non, yeah, non-negative. So these two formulas, these two parts of the theorem sound pretty similar, but the difference is when we're talking about an odd integer or an even integer. And the difference is that if n is some even in integer, so we're taking the second root, fourth root, sixth root, what we have to avoid is taking an even root of negative numbers. So in this case, let me write that a little more clearly, even, so if we're taking the nth root of some function, we need to make sure that interior function is continuous. That's the same for properties 5 and 6. And then if the root is an even root, we have to take the extra step of making sure that interior function is non-negative. So it has to be a 0 or a positive value to be non-negative. 